Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial for designing off-grid solar PV systems. My name is Mohamed Pakravan and today I'm going to briefly talk about how to design an off-grid solar PV system with this open source and free to use toolkit developed by Green Empowerment and PRE. So before we start on designing, let me show you how you can download this toolkit. Uh, if you go to greenempowerment.org and then under what we do, impact expansion, technical documents, and it will be here under solar energy systems, there is off-grid solar PV system design toolkit. Simply click on it and it will uh, download the toolkit as an Excel document for you. So you could use it based on a Microsoft Excel platform. I have it here, uh, the first, tab here has instructions on how to use the toolkit and the meaning of the cells that are in different tabs the meaning of each color for cells if you have any question feel free to contact us at info at sign green um, so the way the toolkit is designed is each piece of the system is going to be designed in these tabs here from demand inverter battery pvri protection and then the design summary is here. You can have an understanding of the costs from capital and operational cost perspective here. And a schematic of design is also mentioned here for you. Before we jump to a design, let me briefly discuss what an off-grid solar PV system mean. So this is a graphic explanation of an off-grid solar PV system. It has AC loads. These are the loads that are going to consume electricity we're going to capture all the loads that we want to provide electricity for in this table here under demand. And then we have inverter. Inverter is the piece of equipment that changes the DC current to AC current so that it's useful for many electricity using appliances. So the inverter is going to be designed in this tab here. We're going to talk about each tab in detail later. After we have designed the inverter, we're going to design the battery bank or storage unit for our system under the tab related to batteries. And then this is going to be a design for solar PV panels and charge controller in the separate tab called PVRI based on the location. Then we have each piece of the system connected to other piece through cables and protection units, circuit breakers and we're going to design those units under the protection tab. So let me start this tutorial with one example. Let's say that I want to provide electricity for a community in a remote area. So I have to make sure that I capture all the electricity loads for that community in this table, as I'm going to show you here. I'm, I make sure that I list every equipment that's going to use electricity. So here, let's say that I want to give three lights for houses, indoor light, internal lights. And then there are 20 houses in the community and each light has five watts of rated power. They're going to be on for six hours a day. Most of the time they are working during evening hours. They are highly efficient LED lights. So I'm putting actually 100% here. And then I can fill out this table for every single load I have. It doesn't need to be based on these categorizations here. It could be any kind of load. As you see here, we have special loads that could be a commercial refrigerator or a water pump. Uh, so basically, all you need to do is to fill out this table based on the needs you have in your community. So I'm going to fill out this table based on some assumptions for this hypothetical example I have in, in hand. So now that I have imported all the loads in my, in my hypothetical example, there are a couple of items that I can see in this uh, at the bottom of the table. First one is the, the maximum, the peak power that I'm going to need every day. And then the total energy required each day. 
and then the total amp hour, the capacity of the storage that I'm going to need every, every day. Uh, with the information here, uh, now I'm ready to move on the, onto the next tab for designing the inverter. But before I move to the next tab, let me explain a little bit about the, the colors of the cells in the toolkit. Some of the cells are blue. These are the optional user inputs. The yellow cells are the user inputs that are required and system takes them in for calculations. So if you put in values in these yellow cells, the system is going to calculate a value based on these yellow cell values. Except demand page, any other page, the yellow cells are required inputs. That means user needs to put a value into the yellow cells in order for system to do the calculation in the, in the further steps. Uh, you see this pattern throughout the toolkit a lot. The first column, the pink cells here, are the values calculated or suggested by the system. You may use these values or in cases that actually it could be modified by the user, you could have your own value in a blue cell next to it in the next column and the system is going to take your defined value rather than the calculated value uh, for next calculations. You see this pattern throughout the toolkit pretty often, so you should get familiar with this pattern. Now that we have all the, the loads specified here, the inverter design could be handled here in this tab. Uh, the first thing we need to define is that if we're using an all-in-one solar charge controller and inverter or not. So uh, if you look at this photo again, charge controller and inverter are two separate equipment in some systems. However, you could combine them to be one unit. And if you're using one unit, that's all-in-one inverter and charge controller, the system needs to know that in this, uh, in this example. So now what we want to know is that here, if we are using an all-in-one solar inverter, solar charge controller and inverter, we, we put yes. For the purpose of this example, I'm going to design these two equipment separately. So I put no, every single use that I have in my community is basically single phase. So I'm going to use single phase rather than three phase and the inverter efficiency, I'm going to assume it's 90%. You could change this if you have a particular inverter or inverter brand in mind that has higher efficiency or lower efficiency. So the next thing I see here is that the system has calculated based on the inverter efficiency, how much gross energy I need in my system. Uh, so as you see, the calculated value is 38 kilowatts per day and it's, it's now used for further calculations. However, I want to round it up to, let's say 40,000 uh, watts per day so that uh, the system has a little bit of a room to wiggle in terms of you know the, some of the households in the community that I'm designing this system for decide to have more electricity consumption or use the equipment for more hours. I'm going to round it up to this 40 kilowatt hour per day. So based on that, then I, uh, I see that uh, the system is suggesting me that I use one inverter for six kilowatts. This inverter is supposed to work for a 48 volt system. However, in this little table here, I see if the design inverter capacity is more than the requirements of the inverter by the system. The system needs an inverter capacity of at least 5,800. Uh, watts. What I have in this system right now is I'm going to use a 6 uh, kilowatt capacity for the inverter. With a tolerance, with a validation check margin of 5%, this is a valid design. That means basically the inverter I'm going to use is sufficient for the need I have. However, if I decide that I'm going to use an inverter of let's say five kilowatt capacity, what happens is that this table turns red indicating that your system right now is not designed appropriately. So when you see this table turning red, that means the validation check is not okay. You need to adjust your system or your input values in a way that this table 
remains green throughout the, the process of designing the system. So let's keep it at six kilowatts here. Uh, and uh, now that we know what size of inverter we need, let's move to the next tab, which is designing the battery system.